Okay, so Oliver Anthony has just released a brand new track. It's literally a couple of hours old and I've already had a whole bunch of people asking me to please um, do this one and react to this one. Uh, they say it's amazing as well. Um, the song is called I Want To Go Home. Um, before I even get started, I just want to say thank you to everyone, obviously, who uh, watched my last video and commented on my last video. Um, a lot of great response uh, responses from a lot of you. Uh, so a lot of support, a lot of great uh, um, responses, a lot of uh, people who subscribe to the channel. And uh, I appreciate that. I really do appreciate um, the fact that you enjoyed that video, considering that it was a video with, that was more a rant than... <laughs> than anything else but anyway let's uh, get on to this one Oliver Anthony uh, I want to go home um, let's see what we've got over here let's go well, if it weren't for my whole dogs and the good lord they'd have me strung up in the psych ward cause every day living in this new world is one too many days to me Son, we're on the brink of the next world war And I don't think nobody's praying no more And I ain't saying I know it for sure I'm just down on my knees begging the Lord and take me home I wanna go home now, I don't know which road to go been so long I just know I didn't used to wake up feeling this way cussing myself every damn day there's always some kind of bill to pay people just doing what the rich man say I wanna go home Farm in the ground Grandson sells to a man out of town And two weeks later the trees go down Only got concrete growing around And I wanna go home I wanna go home I don't know which road to go It's been so long just know I didn't used to wake up feeling this way Cussing myself every damn day People have really gone and lost their way They all just do what the TV say I wanna go home Won't for my whole dogs and the good Lord They'd have me strung up in the psych ward For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? That is an incredible quote. I can't, can't remember who actually... Um, said that right now um if i had to guess um i'm gonna be i'll be speaking out of turn if i even had to guess um yeah so yet another uh absolutely beautiful song and i think this is actually a really really nice song to follow that of um richmond of, of um, north of richmond um because yet again another real song and I think this was actually a lot more um, intimate and a lot more personal to himself in terms of like you know if it wasn't for my dogs if it wasn't for you know like like these small things that some people might find mundane but that's the only thing that sort of keeps you keeps you you sort of living like right gives you a little bit of hope essentially um, he would have been strung up in a psych ward you know it's it's funny, I noticed a couple of comments in the, um, my last video where, and I, I appreciate everybody that commented, and you're more than welcome to have your views, and you know, it's your freedom of speech, and I'm all for that. 
um, where people said like, well, it's no better in South Africa. You're not American. You're South African. And um, take a look at your own country. You know what I mean? It's 100 times worse than America. You know what I mean? So who are you to talk? True. Yeah, there's an argument for that. Absolutely. There's a very valid argument for that. And uh, yes, South Africa is... Um, it's got its own problems. It's got um, one of the highest corruption rates in the world, one of the highest crime rates in the world, um, and in many, many, many ways, arguably, it's 100%, 100 times worse than the United States. But you know, someone like me looking in to the political system of America and having a say on the political system of, of America... Um, there's a reason for it. And it's not just me, and there's a lot of people around the world who are currently speaking about the political system in America, people from the UK and whatever else. Anybody that sort of has a Western-run society and a Western-run notion of the world, as South Africa does, right? We're a democracy ourselves, essentially. And for us to actually have, or someone like me to actually have a, some sort of input on the United States, there's a reason for it. And it's not just hubris that I, I am speaking from. Why I say this and why a lot of people around the world say this about America while not being American is because if South Africa sneezes, nothing happens. If America sneezes, the whole world catches a cold. We never chose to be the global he hegemony. You did. America chose to be the global hegemony. And for better or worse, you became the global hegemony. And for all of America's misgivings, there is a lot that America provided to the world, to the, the entirety of the world, that were really great things. That were the bastions of free, uh, free speech, the bastions of freedom, the bastions of, in, of uh, innovation. Um, they were the ones that are keeping our maritime uh, trade open and keeping that safe so the world can open and trade freely. America are the ones that protect those waters. American people, American soldiers are the ones who protect those waters. You're the global titan. You're the, 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 the mammoth economy that can actually do many things. And it's not the politicians that did any of that. Politicians didn't do any of that. It's the American people. It's the American people who are the innovators. It's the American people who built those businesses. It's American people who built America to be what America is and they took their spot as the shining light on the hill. And when the rest of the world looks at the shining light on the hill and says, like, the light is dying out and it's a concern, it's not because we're doing it out of any level of arrogance. It's because it's a concern. A strong America means a strong world. And yes, there's been many things and America stuck their nose in many different uh, uh, places around the world that isn't great but before world war ii before america got involved in any of that the world was consistently in chaos outside of all these uh, um um wars much smaller wars that we've had since the 1945 right the world has been at relative peace for the past 80 to now going on 100 years and that's thanks to the united states the world was in complete utter chaos. There are statistics that show you all of that in terms of all of the conflicts around the world. Everyone was fighting with their neighbors. And then post-World War II, the world is at relative peace, right? Obviously, there's still wars here and there, but we had it far worse. So America brought something great to the world. America brought a sense of value. You were bastions of religion at one point, right? Where... Whatever religion you had was the best religion there was, even though they had more of a Christian notion. You know what I mean? That's who America was, and that's who they pushed up. Their chief export was Hollywood, and that's all Hollywood pushed out. Was freedom, liberty, religion, God, standards, morals. And that didn't come from a political order. That came from the crux of the, of the people in the United States and their own moral values. American people are, are fascinating individuals who literally outachieved the majority of the world in its education, in, its, in everything. And to see that completely collapse is concerning 
not only for the American people, but for the world at large. So yes, I think it is more than right for people to have concern about the United States and about its people, to actually have concern and to have some sort of empathy and, and, and uh, um, uh, sympathy for the people of the United States who built such a great nation to have it all dissolved by design. We feel for you. We feel for ourselves. Make no mistake, the free will today stands on the shoulders on the shoulders of very, very, very brave men and, and women that fought for this freedom, that gave us what we have today, the conveniences and the privileges and all of that. We stand on their, soul, on their shoulders, uh, shoulders and we are currently spitting on their graves with no gratitude or no appreciation for the world that we have. The world that... It, you could go back to any point in time and the world was not better. Any point in time from today. All of the people that are complaining about the United States and complaining about the Western uh, world and they're complaining about how terrible, how terrible Western society is. Take me to any point in time where it was better than right now. Better than right now. Even with all of the issues we are currently having, having right now. Sure, things will get bad. But take me back to any point in history and tell me, where did we live better? Where did we live better? We are unbelievably privileged. We have got incredible conveniences. Our uh, um, 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 uh, life expectancy is much higher than just 100 years ago. Our, uh, technology, uh, uh, our technology is through the roof. Our uh, um, technology in medicine is through the roof. Like, we've progressed, and America has been the major reason, the major factor that the world has progressed to such, to such a degree. So sure, America is uh, uh, um, in problems, and the reason why people speak about that is because people are invested in the beacon on the hill still shining. People are invested in that. So now I don't just speak to try, I, I never ever speak of America to just try and degrade America. If I degrade, I degrade the political system in America and never the people of America ever. For those of you who think that like we're trying to in any which way put ourselves above you. Oh, are you joking with me? Like I said, we're not the global hegemony. Uh, hegemony. You are. You run the world. This is your empire. This is your playground. The world is your playground. You made it so. And to say now that because you're outside of the United States, you have nothing to say, sure, that would have worked if you weren't the global hegemony. Sure, that would have worked. But it doesn't anymore. We're part of this. We're part of the system you created. We're part of the system you exported. And for the most part, it's a good system. For the most part, um, it's... Good ideals, let me rather say, than a good system. It was good ideals that you exported. Morals, value, religion, God over everything. Loving, unity, all of that. You exported that. And what is so hurtful to see, what painful to see, is how it's unthinkable that the people who push that are the ones who are trying to retract that that's what's completely unthinkable. You would never think that this is where the United States would be. And like I say, if you sneeze, the rest of the world catches the cold. If you have, you change your ideals and you change your religion from whoever practices their religion, that Christianity is important, that Muslim being is being important, that being Jewish is important, and whatever religion you have, you have the right to, 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 uh, um, to practice it and to protect it. To now have that all change that a secular religion is the most important thing. And then now you get to ship that all over the world through the, the one uh, uh, um, portal that you have been shipping most of your ide ideologies across the world, which is Hollywood. When you ship all of that, everyone feels that fucking cold. Everyone catches that flu. 
You think your ideals aren't now through your social media that you developed and then you go and push the ideals. And I'm not talking about you as people. I'm talking about radicals that push the ideals through those systems, through that apparatus, through out into social media and out through Hollywood. You think that's not affecting other people? Take a look at it. The whole Western world is now diving into delusion. South Africa included. South Africa included. Why? Because all of this is coming from the United States. We have an invested interest for the United States to stay reasonable, to stay logical, to stay truthful to ideals and traditions as they always did in the past. The people, I'm saying, not the politicians. So yes, I'm invested in uh, America. It's a country with great people. It's a country of people that are unbelievably hyper-competitive. It's a country that used to believe that winning meant something. And then participation trophies were for the weak. It's a country of winners and losers. And if you lose, there is honor in losing. Because you learn something. And you fail better and you become a winner the next day. And when you become a winner, it means something. Because meritocracy means something. Because you beating yourself, your yesterday self, means something. Self-improvement, being better, being stronger, having a faith, having set standards and values that you, that you follow by, that you remain disciplined to, that makes you a better person in your life, that helps you and helps your family and helps the community. The nuclear family used to mean something. That's why we're invested in the United States. And that's why a silly old, a city sod, a silly little Joe Soap like me from the other side of Africa that no one could care about has a say. And you might not agree with it. You might say that I have, I shouldn't even be uh, 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 um, having uh, 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 um, an input on on uh, um, the American system but I'm gonna have it anyway and I'm gonna share it anyway do you know why because that was your ideals because freedom of speech and protecting that was your value I'm practicing your values and that's why I say what I say about the United States not being an American. I hope that clears that up. Beautiful song. I'll catch you on the next one.